As we explained in the previous episode, the Apollo 10 flight software has been lost to history. Its only known version is currently locked in the ascent stage of Snoopy, the limb of Apollo 10, and currently thought to be orbiting the Sun, which is a difficult place to get it from. But down on Earth, Mike Stewart has been studying a development listing of the Apollo 10 LEM software very closely. Unfortunately, it's not the flown version, but an earlier development listing. But he thought maybe he could start from this earlier listing and piece the flown version back together. After much effort, he finally succeeded and has good reasons to believe he reconstituted a bit accurate version of the historical software. In this video, he tells us how he was able to do that. I am pretty impressed myself, so I can't wait to hear his story. Fair warning, this is another one of Mike's deep technical dives, which I leave mostly unedited. And we have a second one. Yep, this is Luminary 69. Mm -hmm. uh, almost, but not quite the version that flew on Apollo 10. Um, what flew on 10 was Luminary 69 revision 2. The, the reason for the, the two revision numbers mm -hmm. is that uh, Luminary 69 revision 2 was created at roughly the same time as Luminary 95 because 69 was the one designated to fly on Apollo 10 and they didn't want to fly any of the other stuff from mm -hmm. 70 through 94. Mm -hmm. They just revised 69 to mm -hmm. have the one change that they wanted. They backported. Yep. All right. Yeah, so 69 revision 2 has been sort of lost to history, uh -huh. but um, you were using this listing and, and then a whole bunch of other things that I can show you, we uh -huh. were able to put it back together. <laughs> so to recap, Mike's starting assumption is that the flown software, known as Luminary 69 Ref 2, is a combo of the listing he has, plus unknown bits taken from later versions up to Luminary 95, which were backported to 69 before Apollo 10's flight. Now, even if he's right, it does not help that much, as we don't have the version of Luminary 95 either, which has also been lost. So at this point, I'm a bit baffled on how Mike is going to reconstitute his missing pieces. To sort of set the stage, uh, from Don Isles a while ago, we got this, this uh, memo, Luminary memo number 75. Um, Subject is R2 lunar potential model added to luminary. Uh, and it goes on, it says, uh, we were directed by Manned Space Flight Center on 1st of April 1969 to release a new luminary revision 69 module containing the Boeing R2 lunar potential model. So they wanted to change how the AGC calculated gravity around the moon to make it more accurate right before launch. And, and the, the question is, can we get from this to what actually flew? So for a long time, we had scans of this listing we had this memo that said they changed the gravity model, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot we can do with that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, we, can, we can look at uh, Luminary 99, you know, mm -hmm. what flew on 11, and say, mm -hmm. well, you know, this this code changed, but yeah. you know, we we can't know exactly uh, what it looked like in in revision mm -hmm. two of Luminary 69. By, by um, the way, my, my camera color balance doesn't really like your blue screen. It makes you look all red. So if, <laughs> if, if Mike looks all red, you know what it is. Okay, go go, go ahead. Um, so that changed uh, when Ron Berkey, uh, who has been scanning a bunch of engineering drawings for the AGC and the lunar mm -hmm. module at the, the National Archives, came across this drawing completely unexpectedly. We had no idea that this existed. Um, <laughs> we were completely blown away. Uh, when uh, he found it. Okay, um, and it looks like a piece of paper to me, so why, yeah. why were you blown away? <laughs> so this, this drawing is the computer program master deck tape for Luminary. Uh, if we scroll down here, what this is, is for every version of Luminary that they constructed into physical modules, um, this is a listing of the checksum for every bank. Yes, I see lots of little numbers. Yeah. So at the end of at the end of every bank, there's a checksum word, um, and that checksum is calculated such that the sum of all the words in the bank plus this add up to be the bank number. Yeah. So the the AGC can run uh, like self test code over the banks, add up all the words, check to see that the sum is the right number, mm -hmm. and if so, then the rope is working. Right. Um, it actually, I think, par partially why they created this uh, this drawing is it also ended up being 
a good way to identify AGC programs by looking at their their checksums because right. they tended to be unique for every program. Right, right, right. So anyways, um, now we have uh, for both um, Luminary 69, which is mm -hmm. this one, mm -hmm. and Luminary 69 Revision 2, what all of the checksums are of all the banks. Okay, you have them uh, for both. Right, for both. Aha. Um, so Ro Rosetta Stone. Right. So now we can make changes to the Luminary 69 code, and if the checksums for the banks come out to be correct, then we probably did the right thing. Except all you have is the sum of all this whatever 2,000 mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> memory position in there. Yeah. So you have to fill in quite a bit of blanks. But um, at least you can check if you can if you have done it right. Right. Uh, so uh, what I did is I've made a file here. Uh, they also call these the bugger words, the checksums. Um, mm -hmm. So I made a file that just takes everything from that drawing, mm -hmm. um, says bank two is 77402, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Uh, and then I've made a folder here where I've copied over all of the Luminary 69, this listing, the mm -hmm. transcribed version of this listing. So let's freeze frame for a second. Mike is glossing over this, but a big issue was how to OCR the scan of these listings. OCR performed very poorly on green bar and was mostly unusable. So with the help of a small army of volunteers he enlisted, Mike hand transcribed the source listing and all of its programs, which is the directory of files shown here. And he hand messaged it until it recompiled exactly to the known binary code. When we get back to the live picture, he will actually recompile all these source files live. Don't blink, as this very lengthy operation on a large mainframe at the time is now taking a fraction of a second on his modern laptop. And if I build it, um, I got a, a printout here. I've made a, a little program that compares what it was in that file to what was actually assembled. So, so now you have recreated the code from the source and you're checking the checksums right. of your generated code. Yep. And I got two mismatches here. So between this listing and what flew on, uh, what actually flew, uh, two banks changed, bank 11 and bank 13. Uh, so it also shows you uh, what it just assembled versus what it was expecting and what the difference is between those two numbers just sort of for easy reference. So it's reference. pretty close out of whatever number of banks, 36, 36 banks. 36 banks, only, only two, two have changed. So, this, so now right. you're narrowing <laughs> down right? and it looks like it might be possible to recover something. Yep. So um, just looking at what it gave us mm -hmm. right off the bat, uh, bank 11 is very different it's just about as different as it could possibly be. Uh -huh. So that's probably where they changed the uh, the gravity model uh -huh. uh, is in bank 11. Because the difference for 6051. Right. right. Uh, bank 13 is actually really close. Uh, it's only 62 octal different from the expected. Um, so bank 62 is... Uh, so they might just have changed a few bytes. Or yeah, a what, few what constants or something. Bytes. Um, there is no bytes in the <laughs> AGC, but uh, a few words. Right, yeah, they probably right. just changed a, a few words there. Uh, okay. So that is that is where I started uh, mm -hmm. doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, so. And now, Sherlock, you have to find out what actually <laughs> changed. Yeah, so the first place to look is in controlled constants. Um, this is where they put all of the uh, the numbers related to physics or uh, the mechanical bits of the lunar module, like mm -hmm. geometries, mm -hmm. that's all encoded in the, the controlled constant section here. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a, a group of uh, constants here mm -hmm. um, that are all related to the gravity model. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we open the same thing in Luminary 99, the Apollo 11 code, And then... So, uh, all of these are the same, mm -hmm. except for this line here. And uh, 
over this here, a... this one. So this, oh, this and you say maybe if I take the stuff from one. Apollo 11 and yep. port it back to Apollo 10, then maybe I got Apollo 10 revision 2. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm just yeah. going to pull that line over here. Uh -huh. And then try to do that again. <clears throat> uh, and that didn't work out terribly well for me. <laughs> Uh, so my difference got a lot bigger in uh, Bank 13. I'm I'm fairly confident that that is the only thing that changed there. Uh, so I was kind of stuck here for a while because uh, those constants are all in Bank 13. That was the only thing that changed. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the rest of the, the, the potential model code is in Bank 11. So I was stuck there for a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, and then, uh, as, as I uh, was saying earlier, uh, the gravity model was ported back to Luminary 69. It was originally added to Luminary 95. So we have another memo here that describes the changes that went into revision 95. <laughs> uh, and uh, point three here is the implementation of the, the lunar potential model. So it says, as a result of this PCN, two single precision pad loads are needed. Uh, we'll get to those in a little bit. As a further result, uh, the value of time delt in R41 was changed from 15 to 20, thus overriding PCNs in 58, which had increased it from 10 to 15. So now you have a memo that's in between 10, 10 and, 11. and 11. Yep. So yeah, a version that was never flowed. It's more just that this is another, like we, we now have something that may have changed for 10 as well. Okay. Even though we don't, it didn't explicitly say that. Mm -hmm. Uh, this might be a, a good thing to try okay. to, to get to the to the Flum software for ten. So let's find time delt. Um, that is defined in integration initialization. So I'm just going to change this uh, from one thousand to two thousand to try to do what the memo says there, and then we'll try that again. And now. We only have one bank wrong. <laughs> well, so you fix it. So it it was changed in, but it wasn't changed in eleven. It was just changed. It was changed in eleven too. Okay, uh, so you, I, you just I, missed it. I I wasn't. Um, or you wasn't looking for it. I wasn't looking for that. Okay. Because I was only looking for stuff to. Oh, because there's plenty to... of changes, so you have to find out the relevant ones versus the irrelevant ones. Right. Oh, okay, so there was another change that was yeah, added. So no, th yeah, this it. was off in integration initialization, which doesn't really have anything to do directly oh, with okay. the, gravity, the gravity model. So, it yeah, took so there's, there's the 2000 from Apollo 11. So it took two memos right. to, to, to figure it out. To All get right. there. Yep. Okay, so you have one bank fixed yep. by changing one line and one constant. Yes, so now we get uh, to the hard part, uh, which is um, the actual gravity model itself. Uh, and I think that is in... And then, then yeah, basically your only good. hope is to find a later program that would have it or something right. like that. Right. Yeah. And it, it turns out that it didn't change but like it, it it didn't change between Luminary ninety five and the flown version Luminary ninety nine Rev one, which is what I'm referencing here. Okay. So because it's it's didn't change there, it's the same in ninety five as it was in sixty nine Rev two. <laughs> So, so you took it from um, eleven then? Yes. So we're just gonna we're gonna copy and paste a whole bunch of code from eleven. <laughs> uh, so ninety five is lost, right? We we don't have a copy of that. Right. That one is lost. So so you're just trying to infer what ninety five was. <laughs> right. But we do know from the memos that the gravity model didn't change between ninety five. Right. And right. Right. But 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 you have memos that describe what happened to yeah. ninety five and to <laughs> ninety nine from ninety five. Yeah. It turns out they're really really good memos. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, here. yeah, they documented their stuff for, for all the flack they did take not documenting yeah. their stuff. Yeah, so actually, which was very well documented. I'm gonna open this in diff mode. Uh, so let's get down here. Uh, the gravity model. This is where it's calculated. Uh, you can kind of tell uh, just by the numbers it's referencing here. Um, we know from the pad loads that those are, are gravity model related. Um, so left is 10 and right is... This is 10, is, this is 11. 11. Yep. And you're trying to fix 10 to make it the flown 10. Right. So uh, essentially what I did 
is I just went through here and from from this line down to here uh, so I'm copying everything up to n branch and then I'm gonna go over here you need to cut and paste <laughs> <laughs> yep. at the exact right place <laughs> I suppose you tried a few times. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, I did this uh, months ago, so we're about to find out if I do it right a second time. <laughs> oh, this is very recent that you were able to uh, recover uh, Apollo 10? I thought you did that a long time ago. No, no, no. This is We didn't get that, that drawing with all the, the bank sums until very recently. Okay, so uh, I did that. Um, also at the bottom of 11 <laughs> is this code. Uh -huh. uh, which was all just kind of stuck here because they didn't have a good place for it. Um, mm -hmm. This is more gravity model code that didn't fit up there. Uh -huh. no, um, no space. And there, there's, there's an additional complication there. If I go look at the actual build of Apollo 11, um, and let's look for quality one. Uh, this code is actually in bank 13 on Apollo 11. So if I just stick that code there on Apollo 10, it'll end up in bank 13 as well, which is wrong because we wanted to go into bank 11. <laughs> right. So you have to move it so, also. Yeah, so we have to move it. So there's um, some... So, um, so so basically that's a code that didn't fit in 11. They have to find another place for it. And right. then you have to move it back to the position where it was. Yeah, so what I'm going to do... Just for now. This is going to end up in a bonus video. Okay. No, that's <laughs> fine. Way too acrobatic. This is incredible. What I'm going to do is just stick it in bank 11. <laughs> All right. Where, where, and you know, well, it doesn't matter where you stick it because the, 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 the checks will be the same. Or, or does the... No, it, it does matter. Ah. Because uh, the assembler assembles things in the order that they show up in the listing. So mm -hmm. if we put it after other bank... 11 code then it'll be in oh, the, the, the assembly order. is different oh, right. okay all right so, so how do you know which place to stick it in i assumed that physically in the listing they put the code in the same spot mm -hmm. in in so 11 and, and 10. okay so, you're so that's right an right assumption after. i'm making right okay. now <laughs> uh -huh. um so we are almost there uh we've got all of the old gravity model code back and so the last thing I have to do is actually define those two new erasables. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go into... The two new erasables. Oh, that they refer to. Right. That... So there are two new pad loads that they created that they referred to there. Right. In the memo. And uh, they just stuck them. I'm making another assumption here uh, because we, I don't think we have the flown pad load for Apollo 10. Um, but what they did on... Uh... So, Palos, I thought this was something that they told the uh, astronauts from Earth to load, but they had a default? Or... Uh, pad loads are, are so called because they're loaded on, on the launch pad. Um, oh, pad load. Okay, so they're different from the... Okay. I was they're they're different like... from a maneuver pad. Okay. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. This is like a uh, configuration for the AGC program what your landing time is, what your launch time is, what your, you know... Okay, okay. Configuration so, for the mission, right. essentially, is, is the pad load. All right. Uh, so we got on, in the Apollo 11 code here, erasables mm -hmm. for the R2 linear potential model. <laughs> I'm just going to grab those two and stick them over here at the end. So they are, in, they, they are loading erasable memory so you can modify them on the pad, or is that...? Right. Okay. Yeah. So the, if, they, the, if they had put them in the controlled constant section, that build would have only worked for one mission. Right. Okay. But how how do they show up in your um, in your checksum then, if they're erasable? I have to define these symbols, or it won't assemble. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I have to define them in the right spot okay, because if so they're at the wrong address, then so it's it just a definition. Wrong. It doesn't generate code, but right. it modifies the way the code is generated. Right. Oof. Oof, oof. So you just put the definition of them. Right. And you don't define them. Yes. All right. Okay. Oh my. I'm glad I asked so, a question in case. I, I think. Nobody was following. I think that, that may have done the trick. There we go. 
So we just assembled Luminary 69 Revision 2 as flown, as far as I know. Uh, I've made the changes as described in the memos, and the checksums have come out to be exactly correct. And um, yeah, so and I, man, <laughs> <laughs> except some really strike a stroke of bad luck. This this has to be it, right? There's just, <laughs> just no way to arrive at this by accident. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we we did make assumptions along the road. Uh -huh. But I think they're all reasonable. <laughs> right. No, 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 I think this is amazing. Congratulations. So, so now, question, now that you have uh, Apollo 10, mm. well, LEM 10, the mm. landing software. No, in reality, 10 didn't land, mm -hmm. right? It, it stayed in orbit and just mm -hmm. it was a dress rehearsal. But would, that, would it have worked? Would they have, been able, have you been yeah. able to land with it? I... Have, have you tried it? I have not. If you have been following our Apollo guidance computer restoration, you know that we can actually fly the software either on our restored guidance computer or using gate exact hardware reproduction hooked to the accurate Orbiter NASSP flight sim package. I am pretty sure that, that uh, Nicholas Boyg and uh -huh. Alex Bart, the NASSP guys, uh -huh. I'm, I'm pretty sure they've landed 10 a couple uh -huh. of times. I think. I'm not completely sure, but right. I think they have. So if they had actually put all the fuel in the stuff because they didn't give them enough fuel to even try that because right yeah <laughs> they knew they would be way too tempted yeah. to do it. <laughs> right <laughs> but if they had the fuel well we now have the landing program and we can we could prove that they could land mm -hmm. sweet uh, amazing so here you have it for the many commenters that were saying with authority that apollo 10 couldn't land because it didn't have the correct landing code because you know they read it on the interwebs well, that's not true. It lands. We checked. <laughs>